Hey everyone, so today I have a really cool tutorial on how to use shape layers inside of Adobe After Effects. But before I get into that, I wanted to tell you about a huge, huge, huge giveaway I'm doing today. And that is, I'm going to be giving one lucky viewer of this tutorial a free year of Adobe Creative Cloud membership. Now you can enter the contest with two simple steps. First, subscribe to the Adobe Creative Cloud and Boonlo's video YouTube channels. Second step, share this tutorial on either Facebook or Twitter and tell us how you would use your Adobe Creative Cloud membership if you win. If you're sharing on Facebook, be sure to mention at Boonlo's video and at Adobe Creative Cloud so we can find you in the post. Or if you're on Twitter, do at Boonlo's video and at Creative Cloud. The giveaway includes the entire collection of 20 plus creative desktops and mobile apps and it's over a $600 value so be sure to enter the contest. So I'll be announcing the winner on June 31st here in a video post on my YouTube channel, also on Facebook and Twitter at Boonless Video. so be sure to subscribe and check back. Okay, let's get to the tutorial. Okay, so to understand a shape layer, you first need to learn a few of the fundamentals. Now at its most basic level, an After Effects shape is made up of vertices and segments, and together these vertices and segments create paths. You can add, delete, and edit vertices in the comp panel using the pen tool. Now when you add more than one vertex to your comp, they will be connected with segments. And you can control how these segments and vertices connect with each other via Bezier handles. To create a close path, you simply connect the last vertex with the first. Now if you don't feel like creating your shape with the pen tool, you can always use the shape templates. Now the shape tool here gives you five different template options. You have rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, and star. I'm going to select the ellipse tool. And then we can create this simply by clicking and dragging in the comp panel here. I'm going to hold shift to create a perfect ellipse and then release. Now up here in the same toolbar, you have fill and stroke options. Now I can simply click on these words and I have a, a variety of different options with both the stroke and the fill. I can create a solid color or different types of gradients. So I'm going to go ahead and select solid color. I can choose the specific color here and I can choose to add a stroke. I'm going to add a solid color stroke and you can control the width here. Also be sure to have the tool create shape box selected because if you don't, you might be creating a mask instead of a shape. Okay, once I have my shape layer created, if you look down in the timeline, you'll see I have a new shape layer. Now, if we look inside here, you're gonna see two main properties. We have the contents and then we have some transform properties for the layer. Let's open up the contents. And in here, you'll see the actual shape. This is also called a group and this contains all of the attributes and properties of our shape. So if we open this up, we're going to notice four different things here. First, you have the path, and that's our actual shape path that we created here with the tool. This is keyframeable if we want to change it. Just below that, we have the stroke and fill attributes. Now, these are also known as paint operations. If I open these up, we can see that we have a plethora of additional attributes in addition to what we could change in the toolbar before. We can change our composite method, we can change the color, we can change the opacity, um, we can change how After Effects deals with the actual stroke, the width. Now we also have some fill attributes here, we can change the color. And just below this, we have another transform property selection. Now this is specifically for just our ellipse path. Now, this is where some of the confusion might set in with this grouping setup here, because we have these two transform properties right next to each other. So when you're working with a shape, this can be quite confusing. You can quickly grab the wrong thing. You can be adjusting all the shapes as opposed to one specific shape. So let me tell you a little bit more about this grouping system. Groups can be a little bit complex and confusing, but they're extremely versatile when you learn how to use them. If I have my shape layer selected and I use the shape tool, I'm going to simply create a new shape group. You can see it here, ellipse 2, but I have to have that shape layer selected. If I do not have it selected, when I go to create this new shape, it's going to create an entirely new layer. So we don't want to do that. We're going to simply undo. Now I have these two shapes or these two groups within the same shape layer. Now you can do a lot with groups. I can copy paste, I can duplicate, and I can even nest these groups within each other. So you can think of them like comps and pre-comps. I can grab one and drag it straight into the other. And now when I open this up, you'll see it's nested inside of here with its own transform properties. And then we have the transform properties here of the group that it's nested in and then the transform properties of the main layer. So it can get quite confusing, but Again, if you understand it, it's extremely versatile and powerful. So now to help illustrate this system, I'm going to create a little mini universe all within one individual shape layer. 
So to create my mini universe, first I'll have my single ellipse here. This will represent the sun. Now I'm going to duplicate this to create all the other planets. Um, and these will all be just basic ellipses that I can duplicate and then kind of resize and change the color to represent all of the eight planets. To further organize this, I'm going to go through and rename each group. Then I can go to this Add menu and select a new empty group and then take all of my planets in the sun, place them inside of this new group, and rename this group Solar System. And then I can place this inside of yet another group and call this one Milky Way Galaxy. And now I'll name my layer Universe. So you can see here just how versatile this grouping system can be. I can edit transform properties here for the entire layer, or I can go inside of the galaxy and adjust all the transform properties here. I have all of these properties for the solar system. And then if we go down to each individual planet, we have all of our attributes and we can edit these individually. Another confusing aspect that crops up when you're working with shape layers, especially complex shape layers, is trying to isolate individual elements within one particular shape layer. So how can we do that? Well, it's as simple as using the selection tool. And all you need to know is that you can kind of double click your way down to select anything that you want. So first, if I click here, I'm, I've basically selected the entire universe layer. Now I can double click again, and that's gonna activate our Milky Way galaxy. So now we're controlling this. If we move this around, we're moving the transform properties for this Milky Way galaxy. I'm going to undo that. If I double click again, you're going to see that now it's selected this solar system. And if I move this around, it's going to be adjusting the transformation properties for the solar system. Let's say we want to grab the Earth. Now I can just double click again. And you can see the Earth group is selected. I can move this around, undo. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, if I want, I can go even further and grab the individual path. So as I mouse over the edge here of this segment, you'll see my cursor changes. And if I click here, that's going to activate the path. And now I can edit this on a path level. I can grab these Bezier handles. I can grab multiple vertices and move those together. So as long as you know what you're doing with the selection tool, it's actually really, really easy to navigate within the shape layer here. One other quick tip when you're working on a path level here, you have a little button down here that says toggle mask and shape path visibility. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that on because if you don't, you're not gonna be able to see those paths at all. Okay, now you know how to organize your shapes into groups. You know how to select those groups in the comp panel. You know how to keep everything organized. Now for the last part of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can add attributes with our little add menu button here. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create for our universe, we're gonna create like a field of stars here that's within our solar system. So to do that, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna select this solar system group, open this up. And actually we don't wanna, uh, I'm, I'm mistaken here because we don't want the stars within the solar system. We want the stars within the Milky Way galaxy. Sorry, I'm kind of forgetting my fifth grade science here. So we wanna put these stars in our galaxy, not within our solar system. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, I wanna to go to this add menu. And you saw before I created an empty group with this menu, but there's a plethora of different options that you have here. I can create a new group. I can create some template shapes and paths. And then down here in these two sections, these are paint and path operations. The first four here, the, all of these fill and stroke attributes are called paint operations. And down here you have path operations. And think of path operations like effects. And both of these are handled slightly differently by After Effects inside of Shape Layers, and we'll go over that more specifically once we get going here. So first I'm going to create an empty group, and I need to make sure that I have the correct group selected, because if I don't, it's going to place it in the wrong area, and I don't want to get too confused here. Now I'm going to go to Add. I want to add a polystar, and you can see we have the group here. I'm going to rename this group Stars. I'm going to select my star, kind of move it over here so I can see it, scale it down a little. Now, this is just a path, so I need to add some color to it. So to do that, I need to add a fill. And I can change the color of this fill here to yellow. I don't need a stroke, so I'm going to leave that stroke off. So now I have this star, and I want to create a group of stars. So one way I can do that is I can use one of these path operations. And if you look down here, it says repeater can click on repeater and now you can see it's automatically making 
duplicates of my star here. I'm going to open up my repeater options. You can see there's a copies and offset button. I'm going to start to ramp up the copies here. I'm going to turn it up to about five. And now you can see even our attribute, the repeater or our path operation has its own transform property. So this is where it gets kind of crazy because look, we have the repeater transform options. We have the star group transform options. We have the Milky Way transform options. And then we have the layer transform options. This is where it can kind of get really, really crazy if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't have things labeled properly. So I'm not exactly a repeater expert, but I'm going to go ahead and make some tweaks here and create a group of random stars. And one thing that we can actually do is we can duplicate this path operation. We can do, I can duplicate this repeater and have some cool effects here. Okay, so our stars are in place, everything's good to go. And the last thing I want to tell you about is how After Effects handles paint operations versus path operations. Because if you don't understand what it's doing, you can quickly kind of mess up one of your shape layers. So as an example, I'm going to go in here to our planets in our solar system group here. And let's say we want to add like a little atmosphere to our Earth. So I'm going to zoom in here. So if we just open up the Earth group, you can see that it already has a stroke, which again is a paint operation. If I turn this on, it's going to show us our stroke. And you can see, I'll zoom in on it even a little more, you can see that the path is over top of the fill right now, and it's a little bit translucent. So if I go into stroke, I'm going to turn up the opacity to 100. Actually, let's keep it down a little bit. And you can see that right now it's showing the stroke on top of the fill. And that's because it, the shape layers render paint operations from the bottom to the top. So essentially meaning whatever's on the top here is going to show up first. And right now we have our stroke over our fill. These are both paint operations within our earth layer here. So if I grab this stroke and I bring it down under my fill, you're going to see now that the fill is on top of the stroke. So pretty simple, but also you can very easily get totally confused if you don't understand how this is working. Now, Path operations, on the other hand, they also work from the bottom up, but they're affecting everything that's above them. And they work specifically with certain groups. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So actually, I'm going to go back and turn off our little atmosphere thing here for Earth. Now let's say we want to do some cheesy animation where we have one of our planets explode. Let's say Mars is going to explode. So we have Mars here. Actually, let me select... Um, Mars, and then go up here to the add. So we're going to add a pucker and bloat path operation. And if you open this up, you can see that you can move the amount here. So we're going to animate it. We want to keyframe it to explode like this. So right now, it's just Mars that's exploding. That's because I have the path operation inside of this group. But if I grab this and move it outside of the group, just like this, you're going to see now this pucker and bloat of this pucker and bloat effect is kind of in the middle here of all these groups. It's in the solar system, but it's not in any of the specific planet groups. So if I zoom out on my comp, let's see what's going on here. Well, you can see all the planets over here are exploding. And that's because, again, it affects all the other groups that are in the same group, but that are above it. So it's not affecting Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury, or the Sun. And that's because it's below the pucker and bloat. And watch what happens. As I move this pucker and bloat below Mars, Mars is going to explode. As I move below Earth, Earth's going to explode, and so on and so on. And unless I want to grab this path operation and move it inside one of the groups. So if I move it inside of Earth, then only Earth is exploding. All right, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, hit that like button. And if you're not already following us, be sure to hit that subscribe button. we got a bunch of tutorials coming out in the future. And also be sure to enter our contest for that free annual subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. All right, I'll see you next time.